Yep. Well, he's a fiddler too, of course. But yeah, he plays banjo. He plays on one of our All right. Recordings. Welcome. Dance Around Molly. Welcome. He's playing banjo on our recording. Dance yeah. that, that CD. Good morning, campers. That's the one I already got from yesterday, though, right? So we're going to play some tunes from the area of Missouri known as Little Dixie. <laughs> And that is uh, the southern culture area of Missouri. But oddly, it's in the northern part of the state. Very geography. Your home base? Uh, yeah, that was, that's where I grew up. So, uh, and you know, it's, it's still, it's less so now, you know, uh, things pol politically have changed so much and culturally have changed so much. But when I was growing up, you know, you could drive around some of the counties out where I lived and see tobacco barns. And there was, it wasn't a good area for growing cotton, but uh, and you could get go in a restaurant and they'd serve gravy and grits, you know, which is something you'd expect to get in Alabama or Arkansas or somewhere. So, so that's the area the area we're talking about. And we're going to play some tunes that I learned there. That, uh, for, and in fact, we're going to play the tune I played in the show last night. The first tune I learned was called "Climb Upstairs, the Monkey." And uh, it's sort of a little bit like Seneca Square Dance, a tune in G but uh, not exactly and it's also apparently there was a song called climb upstairs with the monkey but the guy i learned it from had changed the title a little bit so let's play a little bit of climb upstairs the monkey in g pat let's just listen now and then i'll show it to you Upstairs the monkey in G. Let's all find G. Yes, okay. And uh, so uh, we're going to play a G scale. We're going to start right here on the G, low G here. And we're going to play all the way up to this B on the E string. <laughs> all in first position, okay? Here we go. So now we're going to play the G arpeggio, which is a broken chord uh, consisting of all the G's, B's, and D's. So we're going to play from that note to this note without playing all the G's, B's, and D's and come back. Just like we did, same speed. Okay. So here we go. good with that okay all right so the first little bit you know the reason I practice scales and arpeggios I don't practice them to the extent of boredom but I always play them uh, every once in a while just because the fiddle tunes these wonderful little ditties we love to play and let roll around in our empty brains uh, they're just made up of arpeggios and little scale passages connected in different ways and so if you can play that 
uh, the, you're, you're just establishing your own muscle memory by playing the scales and arpeggios, you know what I mean? So it's, it's just helpful. It'll, and it'll make you a faster learner, too, because you'll see the connecting points when you listen to a tune. You'll kind of already know how to finger it at some point. So, so the first, let me just play the first part of the tune one time. Just listen. There we go. Okay. Here we go. So we're starting on the open E. Just pick up notes. I'm just going to give you a little passage, and you play it back to me. Here we go. Sorry. One more time. Okay. Now, just an example of what I'm saying to beat a dead horse, which is something I love to do. That little bit we played there, that's just arpeggio, right? Okay, let's try that again. One more time. Good. Now we're going to play another little bit and just listen. All by itself, you know, so why not fatten it up by playing the note below? So here we go. Listen one time. Okay, try that. One more time. Here's what you got so far. Just listen. Okay, here we go. Stop. Last little bit is. Try that. The little pickup note's just an open A. time from the beginning One thing you could, if you want to have a little uh, song in your head, you could say the rack. Let's see, raccoon has a possum head. Raccoon has a something tail. The possum's tail is bare. The rabbit has no hair at all, just a little bitty puff of hair. Raccoon tail with the rings all around. That's how it goes. Raccoon tail with the rings all around. The possum's tail is bare. The rabbit has no hair at all. Tail at all, just a little bitty puff of hair. Okay, so that's the tune. There we go. Try it again. Raccoon tail with the rings all around. Woo! All right, stop. In the second part, just listen. Play it, look at Pat. Just listen now. Open with uh, two pickup notes to G. Here we go. Again. Stop. Listen one time. Listen one time. Bit. 
Listen. Play. One more on that. From the beginning of the second part. Climb Upstairs the Monkey, I learned from Taylor McBain, who was a fiddler in Columbia, Missouri. He was the first guy that actually taught me some tunes, and he was a retired electrician from the University of Missouri, physical plant, so. But he was a really good, solid, old-time fiddler, and when he played, he used an incredible amount of rosin, and Played with, yes. <laughs> played with incredible pressure, and there would be a cloud of rosin cloud. around him when he was playing. He oh. It was very theatrical. Yeah, and he and he and he played with big sweep, sweeping bow movements, you know. Huh. Are there videos? Of and he, uh, there are some videos of him on my YouTube channel, actually. If you go look, yep, quite a few, actually. So uh, now we will play. Uh, I want to see if I can think how Fever in the South goes. Let's see if I can. Here we go. Fever in the South. G.
so that's Fever in the South. Now, if you listen to that tune and the one I just played, do you hear some places where I'm leading the beat and it sounds a little syncopated, a little rag-like? Uh, let's play that first part again. Yeah. yeah, you can hear it, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't fooling myself. <laughs> So there, there, Missouri, you know, was where ragtime music became popularized. That don't, it's maybe a stretch to say it was invented there, but in Sedalia, Missouri, at the turn of the, of the uh, 20th century, uh, a guy named Scott Joplin, you may have heard of, you know, uh, he, lived in, uh, he lived in Sedalia, Missouri, and there was music publishing houses there. There were music publishing houses in Columbia, where I, near where I grew up, that were publishing ragtime music. And also, <coughs> since it was Little Dixie, in the era after the uh, Civil War, you know, that there were, that was a slaveholding area of Missouri. Even though Missouri, by the Missouri Compromise, there weren't supposed to be any slaves in Missouri. Well, there already were when that, you know, happened. Uh, there were already lots of slaves in Missouri because the people had come up from Kentucky primarily to North Missouri where the prairie land was and built, had set up plantations were growing tobacco and, and corn and whatever else. And they brought their slaves with them. So after the... Civil War, all the slaves were freed, right, and uh, or actually starting with the Emancipation Proclamation. So there were a lot of rural blacks in North Missouri. Not so much now, but in the era up probably up to the for Second World War. And so a lot of the guys I learned from knew music. They'd learned from black fiddlers, and they interacted. You know, their communities weren't separated. And uh, so this tune is one of those kind of tunes, and it just. I just think it's no accident that it has that feel to it, you know, that, that it's kind of, and since the ragtime music was so popular and so many people had pianos in Missouri, it was really, by, at the turn of the century or in what I call the Victorian era, you know, late 1800s, pianos were all over the Midwest. They, they didn't have pianos in the, you know, the upland south Appalachia where the Appalachian music was because there, uh, you had to move the pianos up it's mountains and down it. hollers and, in Missouri, Illinois, Iowa, they just brought them out on a wagon or, or, or on the train. Yeah, come from did. come from on the train from Chicago and be dumped, you know, a few on the platform a few miles from your farm, and you just went with a wagon and picked up your new piano from Sears Roebuck. So, so this tune has that kind of ragtime feel, and this is definitely one of the that part of that black repertoire of music from from mid Missouri and specifically from Callaway County. So that that's a county in central Missouri. I'll just tell one more story before we play the tune because you know how much I like to talk. And both the ca- <laughs> he's got a new audience. <laughs> well, you know Callaway County. They call they nick has been nicknamed for all my life the Kingdom of Callaway and before. And the reason for that is right at the point of when uh, the states in the eastern seaboard started to secede, the people in Callaway County were very much Southern sympathizers. And that's right smack in the middle of the state, just north of, north of Jefferson City, if you know the, the geography at all. And they seceded, their county seceded, and they declared themselves the Kingdom of Callaway. And about two days later, word got, of that got to the governor in Jefferson City, and he was only like, you know, 40 miles away, and he sent, immediately sent the army up to, and they collapsed, they, they surrendered, and they were no, so they were seceded from the Union for about two days, I think. So, uh, <laughs> But they're still very proud that they did that. <laughs> they weren't—they weren't as committed as they thought they were, I guess. Though, yeah. Okay, so "Fever in the South" is what the name of this is. Let me play the first part one more time. Pat will play with me, and then we'll learn it. It's a great little tune, and not hard to play at all. You know, sometimes when you're teaching, you should like count them in. Well, no, we're just playing, just me okay, and you. Okay, but just let me know when you're starting it. <laughs> What are you trying to say? Not trying to be critical here. <laughs> what are you trying to say? Okay, so the first note of the tune is the B on the E string. Just listen one time, I'll give you the first little passage.
something like that. Okay, one more time. Okay, one more time. That last little bit is And if you're using your first finger, it's wrong. See how my first finger is sticking up the whole time? <laughs> okay, one more time. Then you go to open E to the A. So that's all, that's all played with these three fingers. Listen one time. time. One more time. Okay, now let's play it. Let's us play it. It's kind of, it's not very melodic, you know what I mean? So it's a little hard to get onto. Let's play, you and I play it one more time. Sure. Shall we? I'll give you the intro, Thank but you. I'll play it slow. It's Here. like, one, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. <laughs> one, two, three, go. <laughs> On the B. Okay, start back at the B there. Okay, that second bit is, listen one time. Can you hear with places where too I'm 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 leading the beat a little bit and maybe holding the note a little longer? That gives that ragtimey kind of effect, you know. So, all right, that part is again. Well, I'll play that little second passage. Here we go. One more time. Get okay, back to the beginning. Again. Okay, we'll move on from there. Listen. So that's the next little bit. One more time. Okay, and the final little passage is... Hang on a second. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Okay, Pat and I are going to play. Just think about it. Oh, we play. First part, here we go. Try to play it together. Here we go. <clears throat> With the piano. Time. 
Okay, second part goes like this. Let's see. Okay, so we're starting this G here. Here we go, listen. kind of rock back and forth on that one. One more time. And then this next little passage goes. Little chromatic thing. Listen one time, listen. Play it. Again. One more time. Sit with feeling now. Okay. <laughs> okay. The, now I'll play you what we what we got so far. Just don't do the slide that time, just go. Here we go. Chromatic.
good tune, huh? <clears throat> fun, fun tune to play. <laughs> that part? Yeah. Yeah. A, G, it's G, A, G, A, G. Kind of do a little thing there, too. Sense? Yeah, yeah, right. It's a little held. It's a, one note's a little longer. Yeah, it's stretched out a little bit. Yeah. And again, I'm leading the beat on like, like even on that first bit. You drop some stuff, I think. Okay, yeah. Your case. Yep. Fever in the South. Fever, fever in the South. So, let's see. Now we'll play one called the Ford One Step, and this comes from Pete McMahon, who was uh, a person I probably learned more from than anybody else uh, ever. I think uh, in terms of technique and the way to play tunes and the tunes he played. He was one of the best fiddlers in the United States at the time, and he lived like 15 miles from me. He was like a, you know, he could, he wasn't like uh, ever going to be one of these, he wasn't a Texas-style player, so he was never going to win like Weezer, but he would go to Weezer and play fifth and third, and, you know, he, so he's a really top-flight, top-notch fiddler. If he came to a contest, everybody was playing for second. Yeah, in Missouri, for years, he just, I would go to, because there'd be like, some years there'd be 60 or 70 fiddle contests you could go to, and and I tried to go to lots of them because they were on weekends. Sometimes on a weekend you could go to five contests. We'd, they'd stagger them so a convoy of fiddlers would go to one. Then they'd you know down 50 miles down the road there's another one starting at four. So they'd all get in their cars. And, and so the same fiddlers were playing in every contest everywhere you went. And, and for, for years, if Pete was there, he was going to win. <clears throat> the, the best story about Pete's lock on first place, though, was there used to be a contest in a little town called Boonville, Missouri that had been going on for years and years, and Pete had won it an uh, uncountable number of times. And for some reason that year, through a family matter or something, he didn't attend. And so they had the first round and they did some elimination. They called back five or six players to play off again for the top prize. And the MC, not seeing Pete's name on the list, took it upon himself to call Pete back into the final round without <laughs> him even there. being there. <laughs> he said, this must be a mistake. And Pete McMahon, he said, and everyone looked around her. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Ford One Step. Uh, so this is a tune, you've heard of a two step. Well, this is a one step, and I asked Pete once, well, how did people dance? He was a good dancer. How did people dance a one step? He said, looked at me like I was an idiot and said, well, you just go one, 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 one. Oh, okay, sorry I asked. <laughs>
nice little wow. tune, but it's a couple dance tune, you know, <clears throat> or what the old timers used to call belly rubbing music, you know, <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to a square dance. No, there's you know? no children here. Good. That's right. All the children are gone. I can say that. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> so. The first bit, it's in C. Let's just play a C scale from here up to here. Okay. Now we're going to play that same C scale and go all the way up to the B on the uh, E string. That but we won't make it to C, right? Because we'll have to shift to do that. And that note's not in this tune anyway. Here we go. Start back here. Keep going. F natural. Back down. Let's play a C arpeggio. So from, from this C up to this G on the E string, we're gonna play all the C's, E's, and G's we can find along the way, okay? C's, E's, and G's. Here we go. Back down. Okay, so now let's try the tune. The first part, again, this is a kind of a syncopated tune because it's a it's a swingy dance tune. So let's, let's play the first part one time. Here, here we go, just listen. first note is G on the E string, but we're going to do a little, kind of a little great light, little pick, hammer on little thing. That's the first little bit, listen. One more time. Just listen as I play the first little, uh, first couple of bars. Break that down for you. Listen, just play this back when I play it. So I'm using, uh, I'm not using, uh, I'm just using three notes. It's just G, uh, E, open E, and the D on the A string. One more time. And then on the E string, I'm doing this. Start from the beginning. Here we go. End up on the C, okay? Listen, just listen one time. Listen, you, I think you've got it. I'm ending up on a little chord. I'm playing the C with the open E. Okay, here we go.
play that D in the middle that's held, listen. Ah. I'm usually putting the G on the E string on top of that so you get a little chord. So it's the G on the E string, second finger on the E, and third finger on the A. Listen, listen out, listen one time. First part, second part goes like this. Just listen one time. So what I'm doing is I'm framing three chords as I walk up. I'm going C, D, 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 F, D, 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 G, back to C. So the first bit sounds like this. Listen one time and play it back. One more time. Okay, now next phrase. One more time. Link those together. Here we go at the beginning. Okay, and the next bit is... Let's go with the second part one more time, phrase-wise. I'll just play a phrase, you play it back to me, and tell me if there's, just you tell me if there's anything you're missing there. Here we go. So phrase one, here we go, listen. One more time. Second phrase. Second phrase is long. One more time. Next phrase.
play it at speed. Here we go. I'll give you the four taters. Oh, no eight potatoes, just four. Good tune, huh? Yeah. That's Ford One Step. Ford One Step. Yeah, it's a nice, nice little tune. So I think I'll try one of my six eighters on my Crusade. Have I heard six it before? Eighters. Probably oh, not. <laughs> one in G. No yeah. name. You guys, all all of you have played any six eight time music? Because yeah. a lot of people who play old time don't play much of that stuff, Jeez. but but it's fun. So so this is a quadrille in G. Okay, so we'll play the first little bit. Okay, so the first part is. Listen to that whole passage. That's all arpeggio stuff, right? Listen, listen. It stops at D. Here we go. One more time. Up to the G on the E string. Okay, 
sorry. up on that F sharp there. One more time. Listen to listen to what you got so far. It sounds like this. like this. First part is like this. One more time. And the next little bit is. Listen now. Listen one time. Keep going. Stop. So from there, listen. What? Listen one time. G, all the way down to the E, A. One more time. Let me play you that whole first four bars, just listen. scale-wise. 
again. From the beginning of the second part. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah.